Good morning. Welcome to your daily dose of God time. You know, so many people tell me today, I am stressed. We live in a stressful world. Um, there are pressures all over. I understand. I had three telephone calls last night uh, through the night for different situations. It's hard to to do things whenever you have all of those stressors in your life. So how do you let God take the driver's seat in your life? See, the key to stress reduction in your life, as we talked about yesterday, is let go and let God. So how do you do it? Well, you make Jesus the manager of your life. So this morning, we're in Life's Healing Choices by Rick Warren. See, the problem is, is that we want to make, we want to be the manager of our own lives. And so we argue and we disagree with God. We think we know what's best. And the reason you're under a lot of stress is that you're constantly fighting God in your mind, thinking, I know God says to do this, but I want to do that instead. Every morning, whenever you wake up, you have to make a choice. You have to make a decision. Who's going to be in charge of your life? Who's going to be in control? Is it going to be you or is it going to be God? Who's going to call the shots? You or God. Every day, moment by moment, you're making this decision. When you choose to make yourself the manager of your own life, listen, it causes conflict, it causes confusion, and it causes stress. I like the way the message paraphrases Matthew 16, 24. Listen to this. Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. You're not in the driver's seat. I am. Well, here's what Christians tend to do. When we become believers in Christ, we give him the driver's seat, but then we promptly hop into the back seat and become back seat drivers. We're constantly giving Jesus advice like, no, turn this way, stop, wait, faster. I want to go that way. I want to see that sight. It doesn't work that way. Think of a dance. Think of a dance. One of the biggest problems that people have in dancing, like I know anything about dancing, but this is what I'm told, is that couples have problems letting the other lead. When they're both trying to lead, they're stepping on each other's feet all the time, and it doesn't look very pretty. So here's the truth. Your life doesn't look very pretty when you're trying to help God lead. Instead, let God be God and make Jesus the manager of your life. So as you go through this day today, what details of your life are most difficult for you to surrender to God? purpose today that he's going to be in the driver's seat in that, and I'm not going to try to advise him. And then the second thing is, how you been quarreling with God without saying a word? What do your actions reveal about who is managing your life? See, one thing God doesn't like either is passive aggressive behavior. Whenever you say all the right things, but you're doing just the opposite. So determine today to give God control of the areas of your life where you have concerns and stress. What will that look like? What difference will it make in your life? And here's the biggest one. You ready? Have you trusted Jesus for your salvation? Because if you haven't, none of this applies to you at all. Welcome to a stressful life without hope of getting it stress-free. The Bible says you can only get to heaven by trusting in God through his son, Jesus Christ. You don't need to earn God's love or work your way into heaven. The Bible says it's by grace that you've been saved through faith, that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, so no one can boast. And if you haven't trusted in Jesus and committed to following him, why wait any longer? If you're ready to step across that line, make a decision to give him the driver's seat, to take control, to come in, be your savior and your king. I'm going to give you a prayer that you can pray. Um, it's not a magic mantra. It just reflects what's in your heart. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart, God raised from the dead, you'll be saved. So maybe pray a prayer something like this. Dear Jesus, I want you to know I pro you have promised that if I believe in you, everything I've ever done wrong will be forgiven. I'll learn my purpose in life and you'll accept me into your eternal home in heaven one day. So I confess my sin. I believe that you're my savior. You have promised that if I confess my sin and trust you, I will be saved. I trust you when you say that salvation comes by grace through faith, but not anything I do. I receive you into my life today as Lord, and I'm turning over every part of my life to your management. I want you to be in my driver's seat. I want to relax in your love, Jesus. Thank you that I don't have to earn it or work for it. 
I want to use the rest of my life to serve you instead of serving myself. And I humbly commit my life to you and ask you to save me and accept me into your family. In your name I pray. Amen. Now, maybe you didn't get all those words. You can rewind. But listen, maybe you're just saying, me too. That's exactly what I want. God hears a me too prayer. And if you just prayed to accept Jesus Christ, here's what I want you to do. Would you text the word follow to 67076? That comes straight to me. Just that one word follow. That's the only thing that's, that'll get through. If you put some other word there, it won't work. But just hit the word follow. Let me know about it. And I'd like to uh, help you take those next steps of following Jesus. Hope you have an incredible day. Let me pray for you. Father, help us today to let you have the driver's seat and to not try to take control or to give you advice. May you, Jesus, be glorified with how we live our life today. And Father, may we find in that, that is incredibly stress-free. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope you have an incredible day. Love God. Love one another. Now go be salt and light.